If your question is when to rob a bank, which plainly is our question because that's what we titled the book, uh, you think about a few things. You think about you know, time of day, day of week, you know, part of the year, and so on. And this grew out of the fact that um, I'd read about a, a bank robber in New Jersey who was finally arrested after robbing banks on six Thursdays. And it made me wonder, maybe Thursday is the best day to rob a bank. Maybe he knew something about the way the bank operated. Maybe that was his day off, whatever. So I went looking into the bank robbery data itself because that's kind of what we do is look at data and see what's interesting. And this one was more, you know, we weren't searching for this before the question arose. It turns out that bank robberies are most, um, the, the most common day is Friday, which I guess people make sense because people think it's payday and there's a lot, a lot of money coming in and going out. But that doesn't necessarily mean you'll, you'll be more likely to be successful um, on Friday. Um, there's really no big difference in success rates from day of week. Um, but you are much more likely to get more money if you rob a bank in the morning than in the afternoon. And yet, most bank robbers work in the afternoon, not the morning, which leads you to think, well, either bank robbers aren't very good at profit maximizing, you know, thinking the way economists do, or that maybe they just can't get up in the morning and go to work bank robbing, bank robbing, which means that maybe if they could get up in the morning early in the first place, they wouldn't have to resort to bank robbery. But the, the, the real answer to when to rob a bank is, is never. And never is the right answer because the ROI, or the return on investment, on bank robbery is terrible. So if you're going to become a criminal, bank robbery is a bad crime. The average haul is about $4,000 in the U.S. per bank robbery. Uh, in, the, in the U.K., it's substantially more. Uh, so you could consider that. And you're likely to get arrested after just three bank robberies and sent to prison. So you, you have to think, as a career move, bank robbery is really dreadful. A and then one other tangent that we got involved with on this and in looking into bank robberies is um, internal, you know, internal inside jobs. And one of the most interesting ones we came across it was a woman in Iowa who for years and years and years had been embezzling money from a bank, about $2 million worth. Uh, and it was actually, the bank was actually owned, the president of the bank was her father, interestingly, so I don't know what the dynamics were there. She was finally caught, um, and it turns out that she had kept two sets of books, which is kind of how you want to embezzle. And she was exhausted when she was caught. And the reason she was exhausted is because she'd, she'd worked so hard, she'd never taken a vacation over all those years. And the reason was that she was scared to, because if she took a vacation, someone would find that she'd been keeping two sets of books and she would have been found out. So it was interesting, she went to prison for a few years, she was let, let out, she moved back in with her parents, who were obviously very forgiving, since it was the dad's bank that she had kind of put into trouble. And then she, was put, then she went to work with law enforcement. Only someone who knows how to cheat, or how to steal, or how to lie, or rob, would know how to help the good guys catch the bad guys from doing it. So she went to work for law enforcement and they found that one of the best metrics uh, to look for in preventing white collar crime, generally in embezzlement in particular, was people who took, who didn't take vacations or who took really strange vacations. So if in your firm you see that someone is passing up all their vacation time, you shouldn't necessarily think of them as just like a super hard worker or an altruist to your company, you, you might want to take a look in their drawer and see if they're keeping a second set of books.